Hello YouTube, it is me, it's always me. Um, what you're looking at here is essentially <laughs> plan E um, of this soap, which is actually more reminiscent of plan A than plan B, C, and D were. Um, but it took me a lot of freaking effort to get to this point. Hopefully you see this and go, oh hey, that looks like a sweater, because that's what I'm freaking going for, and everything else did not even happen. Um, let me fill you in. I got my crock pot over here, a rebatch of, of this soap here. It, it first started out with a fragrance called Nutty Nog, which smells amazing, smells just like eggnog, I think. Um, I was trying to go for a sweater pattern, but in individual molds, in my oval molds, didn't work, didn't work, didn't work, got real irritated, didn't work, tried something else, didn't work. And then I thought, well, I'm just gonna, maybe I'll do a little pocket kind of thing, and that didn't work, nope. Then I'm just gonna pipe on top, nope. The friggin' soap gelled in the piping bag. It got really hot because I wanted to add a fragrance to that, because I had lard in the soap, and lard soap on its own smells like shit, so I'm like not trying to have half a soap smell good and the rest smell absolutely disgusting. So. At that point, I'm like, I gotta rebatch this, and I might as well try what I wanted to do again. I'm gonna loaf because that just feels easier. So hopefully you see that, oh, it looks like a sweater, because it freaking better look like a sweater at this point. I'm gonna put them in here, I'm gonna do two, because there's so much stinking soap in the crock pot. I did this first because I thought I'm not even gonna turn my camera on if it's not gonna work. I'm not gonna waste my time and fill up a bunch of space on my computer if it is not gonna work. I have this space here because I do want to sprinkle a little bit of gold. This is such going to be a tan soap and I wanted to just kind of leave a little spot to sprinkle some gold. But let me go ahead, I'm going to fill um, this mold with about half of the soap that I have. I'll probably cut these wider because hopefully it doesn't fill it hopefully to the top because I would like them to be a little wider to show more of this pattern on top. I don't know, we'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to fill it halfway up. I'll slap this on here, um, have that ready to go, and then I will show you how I did all of this. I've got some really awesome sorcery tools that B at Sorcery Soap sent me. I'm not even using half of them. Actually, I'm like using 2% of them today because I'm literally just using this, but I want to talk about that. So let me go ahead and fill my mold here. I'm not even going to adjust the camera because it's fine where it is, but I'm just scoop and rebatch into the mold. It smells amazing. It doesn't so much smell like eggnog anymore because I added fragrance I added to what I was going to pipe, which is I believe it got hot on me. I did soap hotter um, because it was nighttime and I was trying to go to bed, but it was a brown sugar pumpkin fragrance I got from Brambleberry as a sample. So it that's, doesn't smell pumpkin-y to me, but pumpkin itself doesn't really have a smell. It's all about the spices. So it's got that spiciness. It's super sweet. It's got some maple kind of like po toasted pecan thing going on. Um, it smells really good. So that with that n uh, nutmeg, excuse me, eggnog fragrance, smells quite nice. Here's the rebatch. It looks like how you would expect a vanilla fragrance rebatch to look like brown. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of squish it in there. I want it to be as flat as possible. This is in my crock pot all morning because I made the soap yesterday. It was still very soft. It melted quite easily. Um, there is the original soap has coconut and goat's milk in it. And I added just two little cubes of my frozen coconut milk to this. I didn't want to add any more water. I almost didn't add any liquid at all, but I thought I could use a little bit of liquid. And I feel better with coconut milk compared to actual like dairy milk. So I didn't want to add goat's milk to that. It just felt weird to add to a rebatch. So I just had a little bit of the full fat in the can, uh, coconut milk. Just trying to flatten this out as much as I can here. I was already wanting to dry out and be done in the crock pot. I just, I had to wait till I had time to actually mess with this. Let me get a little bit better view here. Yeah, it still smells good. It still smells good. I haven't done a fancy type of rebatch for a really long time. I used to do nothing but rebatch. When I started making soap, that's what I did. I was kind of afraid of cold process for a while. I'm hitting it with my alcohol because it's getting dry on top. And this shit has to stick. I'm really hitting it on top here. Okay, it's gonna evaporate. Any leftover. Okay. Um. So yeah, I haven't really done a rebatch for a long time, but it was fun. It was, it was nice. Not bad. Last night I was pretty mad, <laughs> but I got over it. 
can meet in the corner. This is not going to be a Castile soap because half of this soap, um, I use bees sorcery from sorcery soaps. Uh, I use the soap dough recipe to try to pipe. It was not a good idea. Um, I also should have let it cool way more, um, which I didn't. But it just didn't didn't really wasn't conducive to piping for me the way I had it, and I think the fragrance had a lot to do with it uh, and the temperature. It's just all around bad idea. Um, I'm just sprinkling this because actually. Yeah, I did leave it out. Okay. This is very fine glitter, sir, mica, so it's going to kind of go right through anyway, but... But yeah, so this recipe's got lard, coconut oil, soybean oil, and olive oil. Half of it, what, they, like, what was originally going to be the base of the bar, um, that was totally a Castile soap. It just didn't, just didn't last. Now the gold's only going to be showing on the sides, but I can't, you know, nail it down quite that well to that specific area, so I just kind of glittered the whole thing. Okay, wish me luck that this didn't snap. It's actually firmed up pretty nicely at this point. I'm just shoving it in there. The ends are the ends, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, in there. You know, so an end piece, you're going in there too. Ugh. I was not gonna let this soap defeat me. I really came close. Because when I when I tried my plan B, I ended up using the oval cutter that I had, and I'm gonna do the center one first just so I line it up properly. Um, it was the oval cutter, and then I just used some of the tools that I got from B to try to like drag this design into it. Nobody thought it looked like a sweater. I showed three people yesterday, and they're like, eh. Just was like, it looks like tire tracks. So I thought, oh, holy name, Grandma got run over by tires. And I laughed, and she laughed, and that was the end of that. And I'm like, it's fine. I thought, oh, I'll pipe it on top. I can call it, you know, it'll just look like eggnog. Nope. Also didn't work. I'm really pushing because I don't want this to freaking pop out at any point ever. No, I'm just staying there because you need to be in there barely going to be anything sticking out, like there's barely going to be a gap, but that's okay. Gap is not vital, I just didn't want to make any more, I was kind of over it. But just a little bit of gold peeks out, which I did want some, so that's good. That's nice. But I showed Jess along the way, I'm like, I sent her a picture of my first twist there, and I'm like, Jess, <laughs> this proof that I did this, <laughs> in case it's all like blows up literally in my face proof that I got this far and she said it looked like a sweater at that point so holy amen your batch is so gooey and gooey okay I did it check that out looks like a sweater right that looks like a freaking sweater with soap under it okay so, hope so, hope so. Okay. Just give me one last little push and squish. Just get it out of the way. Oh, gotta put a lid on my crock pot or else the soap that's left in here is gonna get dried out. I think I split that up about half and half. We'll see. It's definitely not very tall, so I'll probably get six bars out of that where I normally get eight or maybe even five. I'm not sure. I'll have to just kind of calculate and measure to figure out what's going to give me an even number of bars without that weird unfull-sized end guy kind of thing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Okay, so that's over there. Let's get that out of the way. Well, let me show you what I did. First off, I want to talk about Bee real quick at Sorcery Soap. She saw my succulents video and she said, because I, you know, I linked to her in both of those videos because I used her recipe and I'm not trying to, I don't ever use anybody else's recipe, so I figured the one time that I do, I have to give credit. She's amazing. Why wouldn't I give her credit anyways? Anyways. Anyways. I gave her credit. She hit me up. She's like, oh my god, you did a great job. I want to support you in your molding. Can I send you some things? Email me and send me your address. And I'm like, holy shit. Absolutely yes. Like, yes. 
Two days later, I had the entire 60 piece sorcery soap graphing set. And it has all these amazing little detailed cutters. I have these tiny little like poking shaping type tools, which I'm gonna use those probably the most. Super excited about that. Um, it's got a rolling pin with some measuring things for thickness. And I saw on Pinterest today that people are actually rolling their snake, you know, they're especially with fondant, you know, rolling it out with this. I was using my fingers when I tried this yesterday, and let me tell you, it really didn't work. I'm gonna kind of get it a little bit rolled out of my hands here. But overall, your fingers are not even. It's not gonna turn out even because you've got, you know, bumps in your hands. I also think my soap dough was a little too wet yesterday, which was not helping either. But yeah, I just roll it like this. I'm gonna talk through my first one to give you an idea, you know, to tell you essentially what I'm what I'm doing. Um, but then I'll fast forward through the rest because this is gonna be a long video. It took me about 40 minutes to complete um, all of this stuff for the other one. So I'm definitely not gonna make you watch a 40 minute video. All right, stop right there. I have the mold close by so I can measure my first one. After that, I just compare to the ones I've already made. I want to make sure that it's long enough. A little bit extra, like as you saw how it's kind of tucked up and sticking out. I'm just going to trim that off. Obviously, that's, you know, not going to be a problem. You would always rather have too much than not enough, at least in my opinion. Almost ready. What I did with the center um, knit twist, the first one, I made it slightly thicker than the two uh, adjacent on the outsides of it. It's really hard to tell when they're all squished together, but the center one was thicker, too thin, and then a big thin on just a plain twist here. I think you'll see what I mean more with then, so let me just get to it. All right, and pinch that off there. So we're almost long enough. Whoopsie squished it a little too hard on the end there. As long as you apply even pressure with this thing, it's absolutely perfect. Okay. The soap dough that I have that I'm using to get this cool kind of, I wanted a heathered look, because um, if you've ever seen like a heather knit, it's just that gray with like little wisps of, of darker in there. Um, heather can be I think any shade, but typically it's heather gray. Um, I made four different colors of soap dough. One I actually had left over, actually two were left over. One was white with titanium dioxide. The other was left over from my sugar skulls. I ended up pouring that in a mold with the soap dough recipe, but that just had a little bit of my black and gold glitter, which you couldn't really tell unless you're looking up close that there's sparkles in there, uh, but it just was sort of an off-white color. I made my tannish gray with uh, bentonite clay because sometimes if you use enough of that, that looks like heather gray all on its own. And then I made a separate little batch with brown oxide to kind of really give it the heathered look. And I really just smushed it into this log and I'm breaking it off and then stretching it out from there. Almost, almost. It smells yummy. All right, so now that I have two ropes of equal width and length, I'm gonna twist them together. This is the tricky part, because this is, you know, soap is not elastic. It wants to break when you stretch it. So you gotta be gentle. Sometimes in areas you have to push it back together. Whoops. 
Oops, sorry guys, I just realized my baby monitor was not plugged in. Who no knows what it's gonna be, but it's okay. I don't keep it plugged in, so. There we go. Oops, can you see we're breaking? Just squish it back together. Squish and squish and squish and squish. Squish and roll. <laughs> So there's one. The goal now is to do another twist, but twisting it the opposite way, squishing it together, and it kind of looks like a braid, but it's not exactly a braid. First I was just going to do braids, and I'm like, that's not quite right. Pinterest has given me a lot of ideas for this, um, and it was just two hours ago that I saw that I could use this to actually roll it out, and I'm like, thank goodness. Sometimes Pinterest will just set you up for failure because you see something and you think, ooh, I can do that, and then you totally can't do that. <laughs> Other times it's genuinely helpful. I saw a lot of people who were making cakes for their grandmothers and stuff, um, for their mothers, I'm not exactly sure, but were, they had cool knitting things and all the fondants shaped like knitting needles and everything. There was one that I saw, and it was like not just plain knitting pattern, it was like somebody actually sat and knitted and fonded together. I don't know how the heck they did that. But it was pretty cool. I'm not sure yet, I'll probably not decide until I go to edit this video, because I probably got at least an hour and a half plus of footage from yesterday. That totally just was failure. Um, I'm definitely not going to publish that, but I do have the photos of... I'll show you my plan B. I could take a photo of that. Um, or I did take a photo of that. I'll probably enter that into, you know, insert that into the video just to show you. Frankly, I could have left it that way and just been sort of satisfied with how it turned out. And it would have saved me lots and lots of trouble. But I couldn't be satisfied because I've been thinking of this idea since, no joke, like last October or last November. I'm thinking, well, it's too late to go making wintery soaps now. I'm pretty sure it was November. October probably would have been fine. Anyways. It was too late, so I've been planning on it for almost a year. And I thought, you know what, there's no way I'm half-assing this. It has to be right. It has to actually look like a sweater, or what's the, what's the point? What's the point? Getting a little tacky on my thing, so I'm going to wipe it. And hit it with arrowroot. are ready and let's see this is how I twisted it last time it's kind of twisting towards me so I gotta twist the other direction that's key or it's not gonna look right I mean it probably won't look bad but it's not what I'm going for I'm just double checking that they're going the opposite way yes they are it does get easier the more I do it Oops, we broke apart here. I'm just squishing it back together. Almost all rolled it. Okay, and then that's that. You see how it look, kind of resembles a braid? But it's just two twists going towards each other, squished together, and that looks just like knit yarn. So what I'm gonna do, there's this, this is my center one. I'm gonna do two slightly thinner ones on each side, but they're gonna be going that the opposite sort of way. Because this sort of like looks like a V going that way. These are going to be V's going that way. I'm going to do two tinier ones there. And then plain twists like this, like on their own, and just for the outside. I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
We've already about 20 minutes in, so let me get to that, and I'll fast forward through all that so you guys get the idea that I'm not jabbering the whole time. All right, guys, that's it. Let's see, I finished that in oh, almost 25 minutes I was able to finish that one, so it was a little quicker this time. It was also a little bit wider because there's a little bit less peak on the side, but that's totally fine, I don't even care. I used up all my soap dough exactly, uh, so that's interesting. I would have made it work if there was somehow like not enough. I would have figured something out, you know, re-rolled some things. Luckily, I didn't have to do that. And there it is. I think I'm calling this a uh, cozy cable knit or something like that. Here's this one. It's already cooled down significantly. Yeah, definitely thinner, I can tell just by looking at them. Um, I don't care. I think they both look good. <laughs> they look better than the other ones do. That is a freaking fact. So yeah, there they are. I don't know that I'm going to do a cutting video because they're not really going to look any different on the inside. But I'm going to cut them. Looks like they're about filled the same too, which is good. Okay. Yeah, I'll probably cut them. We'll definitely cut them tomorrow or the next day, but I'll do a lot of photos for you and I'll attach that to the video. I'll also attach the photos of my failures um, <laughs> just for your amusement and to let you know that sometimes shit does not go right. Even for me, even for anyone. So yeah, thanks for watching. I really hope you like this. Please tell me if you think this does or does not look like a sweater. I think it does. I'm really happy with it right now, actually. Um, but if you disagree, let me know. Um, thanks again. Please like and subscribe and comment if you did. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.